Your Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, Vice President and Prime Minister of the United Arab Emirates and ruler of Dubai, co-chairs of the summit of the global, on the global agenda and the inaugural meeting of regional organizations, Highnesses, Excellencies, members of the Global Agenda Councils of the World Economic Forum, dear partners and members of the World Economic Forum, ladies, gentlemen, friends, welcome, a cordial welcome to the 2012 annual meeting on the Global Agenda, organized in cooperation with the government of Dubai and the United Arab Emirates. Your Highness, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, I first would like to thank you and the government, as well as the people of the United Arab Emirates, for your gracious hospitality. Your Highness, we have always been inspired by your leadership, one based on a true long-term vision, future orientation, and not deterred by setbacks. Your dynamic leadership is widely respected internationally and is so crucial for the future of this region. Dubai, under your leadership, Your Highness, reflects so well the spirit which should guide us during our meeting, forward-looking, open, inclusive diversity, responsible and responsive. This is the fifth anniversary of the Summit on the Global Agenda, and we have a record participation of 1,000 participants from over 80 countries representing 88 different global challenges and councils. This meeting has become the foremost global brainstorming meeting, integrating the most knowledgeable and the most relevant experts. It is a worthy contribution, Your Highness, to the forthcoming birthday of the United Arab Emirates, a contribution coming from an organization, the World Economic Forum, which was also founded in 1971. This year, we have integrated a number of innovations to increase, globally and locally, the impact of our meeting. For example, through strengthening our online presence with innovative apps, facilitating interaction and knowledge sharing. Through launching a series of public lectures and public-private dialogue series. Through integrating young people, launching two global shaper hubs in Dubai and in Abu Dhabi. Through the inauguration of the first ever summit of leaders of regional organizations whom I cordially welcome here. Through cooperating closely with the United Nations to incorporate the recommendations of the Global Agenda Councils into the MDG's redesign process. And here I am honored by the high-level representation of Jan Eliasson, the Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations, and the presence of Gordon Brown, the special UN envoy on global education. Most important, let me announce here an initiative, a new initiative, which will allow, allow leaders around the world to take better informed decisions. We will start here in Dubai to capture the knowledge of each of you with your help 
in a short video. This will lead over the year to a library of over 1,000 briefings, which will provide global decision makers with better information and strategic insights. We will show in the final session one of those videos as a demonstration. One thing is evident if we look at the future of the world. Already in the coming years, our world will be completely different from what it is today. And of course, I trust you, the Global Agenda Councils, to place your deliberations into this evolving new context of the world. And I will mention only three fundamental changes, political, economic, and social. First, we will have to learn to navigate in a world without clear leadership. We will see a further erosion of unilateral power and formal organizational structures. This poses an enormous challenge to global governance and to the management of our global interdependence. And our first plenary sessions this afternoon will be particularly devoted to this issue. Second, we will have to confront a technological mega, or I should even say giga or terra revolution, digitization, 3D manufacturing, disintermediation, for example, in the health sector, in education, in transportation, robotization will lead to an erosion of traditional jobs. The resulting job gap to provide job opportunities in the next 10 years for 400, additional, 400 million additional people will become, in my opinion, the biggest global concern. In addition, genetics, stem cells, the Bayer re revolution will redefine who we are and not anymore just what we are doing. And this will pose great ethical questions. Third, we have to search for meaning in a total global knowledge society. We will be challenged in the search of our identity being constantly pressured by accelerating speed, complexity, interdependence, complete transparency, increasing diversity. And the danger is in such a world, in such a fast-changing world, that as individuals and as countries, we develop a banco mentality or even a burnout syndrome. We feel very often that we just cannot cope anymore with the change we are confronted with. But that's exactly why we are here. We want together, you, as a multi-stakeholder global community, build the world of tomorrow and show that unprecedented, unprecedented change means also unprecedented opportunities as our host city has shown us so well. I have now the pleasure and honor to introduce the co-chairs of this meeting, and I would like first to call on His Excellency Sultan bin Zayed al-Mansouri, the Minister of Economy of the United Arab Emirates, to address us. Thank you, uh, Professor Schwab. Uh, we have actually simultaneous uh, translation. My speech is going to be in Arabic. Uh, I think you should have the equipment right in front of you for those of you in the front seat. Uh, I think the others also have them. In the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful, Your Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, Vice President and Prime Minister of the United Arab Emirates and ruler of Dubai, Professor Klaus Schwab, founder and executive chairman of the World Economic Forum, Your Excellencies, Your Highnesses, 
distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the government of the UAE, it is my honor to welcome you to the, to the 2012 summit on the global agenda. This global agenda is held in partnership with the UAE and the government of the Dubai and of Dubai as well as the World Economic Forum. The summit on the global agenda is held in the UAE for the fifth time in a row. And this indeed reflects the collaboration between the World Economic Forum and the UAE. The UAE has always proven its uh, high uh, quality in the organization of this important international event. We are very proud in the UAE to host this uh, global uh, summit on the global agenda because it is one of the most important uh, platforms internationally, and we hope that we'll be able, uh, through our leadership uh, vision represented in uh, His Highness uh, Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan, President of the UAE, and His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, Vice President, Prime Minister of the UAE and ruler of, the, of Dubai, to open new horizons for cooperation between the countries, peoples, and cultures to contribute to providing practical solutions to the political, economical, economic, and social challenges facing the world today. The summit brings together more than a thousand global thought leaders, academics, business leaders, government officials, and they participate through 88 councils who meet in the UAE annually to discuss the most pressing challenges that face humanity. And this is a way to come up with practical solutions and recommendations that will be discussed during the annual meeting of the World Economic Forum to be held in Davos in 2013. And this will lead to implementation mechanisms. Your Highnesses, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the intellectual elite needs an exchange of ideas in the most scholarly and scientific manner in order to reach practical solutions face to, in order to face challenges before governments and peoples on the one hand and facing uh, growth and prosperity on the other. The UAE, for instance, over the past four decades has uh, realized great human growth resulting from its urbanization and economic growth. This became a model in human development, education, and technological progress, allowing a good economic engagement in building a society, always working towards development based on our rooted human values and our history, which has always been a push forward and a catalyst for a better future. The UAE is a strong federation of seven emirates that provides uh, infinite good opportunities and a climate of uh, tolerance. Our economy is open. We encourage entrepreneurship, innovation, and prosperity for all. The UAE is the first in the Arab world uh, to have a knowledge-based economy and innovative-based economy based on the Global Competitiveness Report 2012-2013, published uh, recently by the World Economic Forum in its sixth edition. Also, our GDP has known a growth and is now over 1 trillion dirhams, which is the equivalent of uh, $276 billion, which constitutes a growth of about more than 4%, which is something we expect to renew this year as part of our diversification of income and investment in development projects. Uh, we were able also to reduce the share of oil in our GDP to less than 30%. Our government 
ensures improved living standards and quality of life for our citizens and residents of the UAE who belong to more than 200 nationalities. The UAE is the first Arab country and 30th globally out of 187 countries to figure in the Global Human Development Report, Report 2011 issued by the United Nations Development Program. The UAE, since its inception by its founder, the late Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan Al Nahyan, and his brother, the late Sheikh Rashid bin Saeed Al Maktoub, and their brothers, the rulers of the Emirates, our country has always remained committed to the effective contribution to regional and global level development by providing support to countries and peoples with the intention of alleviating their sufferings and enabling them to open new economic prospects. We have strived to build strong relations that pave the way for further development and prosperity to build a world that seeks cooperation, not wars and confrontation. The economic reality in the world today requires us to have a larger role to play in shaping the global economic order, as well as empowering the social development debate and revisit those mechanisms that have not led to an alleviation of p poverty that led to a lot of consequences. Therefore, today, we need a partnership between rich and poor countries, between large and small and medium enterprises, and between global organizations and specialized organizations must be formed. It is essential to reinforce our efforts and take practical steps to find appropriate solution and implement them successfully. This requires uh, that we narrow the gap between rich and poor countries. We must recognize the risk of climate change and the importance of preserving the environment and building a green economy. Every child in this world should have the opportunity to receive quality education in a socially healthy environment if we are seeking a world which is safe, stable, and dominated by human values, competition, and innovation. Then we should enforce efforts to educate all the children in the world and in order to teach them that hope is the key to success and innovation. We should enhance awareness in the business sector because governments alone are not responsible of the development process and delivery of services to the citizens. Social responsibility must be one of the most important mechanisms to improve the conditions of the people and contribute to the building of new values and the relationship between companies and communities. Your Highness, ladies and gentlemen, our world today is witnessing rapid changes at all levels, including political, economic, cultural, and we must carefully study these variables. It is here that the role of over 88 councils in the summit becomes relevant in order to provide us with the best recommendations that contribute to building the world, ending poverty and illiteracy, and seeking to build prosperous communities. I firmly believe that this summit uh, will be distinguished on all levels. In our turn, we'd like to thank all the participants, and we wish you all the success in your endeavors. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Your Excellency Minister Sultan Al Mansouri. May I now call on His Excellency Dr. Anwar Gagash, Minister of State for Foreign Affairs of the United Arab Emirates and also co-chair of uh, this first meeting of leaders of regional organizations. Thank you, Professor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, my my, uh, my uh, speech will also be in uh, Arabic, so uh, if you bear with me, please, with your uh, translations. Uh, your Excellency uh, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid, Deputy uh, 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 Vice President and Prime Minister of, and Ruler of Dubai, your uh, uh, 
Excellency uh, Klaus Schwab, uh, the executive uh, uh, founding director of the uh, World Economic Forum, and uh, your excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you here in Dubai. And it is uh, a great pleasure to me to see you participating in this uh, summit of the uh, 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 Global Agenda Councils uh, that is being hosted in the, the UAE for the fifth time uh, consecutively. The UAE is adopting a policy based on encouraging and enhancing international cooperation and improving uh, uh, bonds and uh, gives great importance to, the, to working with all the partners, international partners, uh, dynamically to face uh, all the international uh, renovative uh, uh, challenges that are increasing on the global agenda. And this is uh, uh, proved through our hosting of many of the international meetings. And this summit is one of the most important uh, meetings to discuss uh, the global issues concerning the, the development, uh, future, uh, future development and uh, uh, in uh, sustainable development. The UAE has uh, the perfect uh, location to host such a summit as we host in this country people from all over the world, and we are proud of our heritage and culture that encourage us to have uh, uh, dialogue and uh, uh, tolerance and to uh, build relations with other cultures. And we believe that uh, cooperation, communication, and dialogue are the right answers to uh, overcome differences and to bring peoples together and closer in a very sound manner. And our meeting of today is an opportunity to enhance this cooperation and come up with a uh, common vision for a better future. And I'm sure that uh, I'm confident that we are always anxious for meeting in such international fora. And in our meeting of this uh, global uh, agenda councils, uh, we are here to discuss issues related to policies, uh, but most importantly, are the issues that are ge being raised uh, are a tool to come up with uh, uh, mechanisms for a future uh, be, 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 uh, becoming a, a proper future for this region and the world at large. And the economy prosperity uh, is finding its place back again in this region, and uh, we are seeing its uh, evidence everywhere. And despite the fact that uh, the Europe and uh, the US are still suffering from the economic crisis, we still have uh, regions like the Gulf, uh, Africa, and uh, East Asia are becoming the uh, motor or the generator for this uh, economy. However, there are concerns and challenges, economic challenges, like the lack of uh, natural resources and uh, many other issues are considered very important in the uh, on the uh, uh, agenda of the uh, emerging economies uh, uh, meetings and we have so many issues on the international agenda that uh, range between s specific uh, uh, sectors like uh, finance to other uh, sectors that include the under the umbrella of uh, my uh, macro uh, economy like partnership and uh, investments. Though, therefore, in our discussions, we have to uh, dwell into the, fa the, the, the opportunities for the future uh, economy and to create opportunities for the future generations. However, the regional issue that we consider the most important and the most cricket critical is the continuous uh, ramifications of the Arab Spring and its impacts on the region. Though that we have uh, uh, new regimes uh, in the region which are still developing and still finding its place and uh, building their roots, uh, still we have uh, a very severe impacts from this uh, Arab Spring that took started uh, like two years ago. Despite these facts, there are uh, still successful regimes and balanced ones and the stable ones, but they are in, uh, under international pressure to stop those activists who are calling for changes and therefore these uh, different uh, councils uh, uh, 
cooperate closely in order to come up with the best answers for the challenges that are posed on the international or global agenda and to find the uh, uh, future uh, overlook of the uh, uh, governance uh, in Africa and in uh, in many parts of the world, and these councils would be seeking uh, seizing the opportunities to uh, develop their ways of responding to the international developments. The UAE is giving uh, high importance to working continuously uh, uh, with the uh, uh, global agenda councils to increase awareness in the uh, uh, guidance of the. In, uh, UN in the fields of uh, human rights uh, and uh, uh, this is uh, uh, also done through calling all companies and the corporate sector in the UAE in order to be aware of uh, protecting and uh, observing the uh, dimensions all uh, issues related to uh, human rights. Uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, uh, during the uh, next two days, uh, the leaders of the international organizations from all over the world would be discussing the global agenda and the common challenges that face our organizations. And they will be exchanging ideas uh, related to the best ways of facing these challenges. We are so pleased to host this first meeting. Uh, of the international groups in the uh, uh, UAE, which is, uh, and our happiness is due to our conviction that we should have these uh, alliances, international alliances, to enhance cooperation and prosperity to uh, uh, overcome uh, our uh, international borders. And we hope that this cooperation would be the wheel towards uh, development uh, on different sectors, uh, economically, uh, socially, and etc. However, uh, the international uh, cooperation important and more important is the regional one. And I encourage you all to discuss the issues uh, raised uh, in a very innovative way as the uh, World Economic Forum is considered one of the important uh, uh, forum for discussing uh, creativity and come up with creative solutions uh, uh, coming out of several processes. And Dubai is the city that uh, provokes and invokes uh, uh, creativity and is open to all ideas to update uh, the tools that are suitable for the challenges of this future. I thank you all for your presence and participation uh, and uh, your visit to the UAE. I hope you would benefit from the deliberations and I welcome you to this meeting. Thank you. Your Excellency, thank you very much. I just want to underline also the importance of this first meeting of leaders of uh, regional organizations, and I would like to welcome uh, the leaders uh, cordially uh, because uh, globalization, sustainable globalization, will have to be built on strong regionalization processes. I have now uh, the pleasure. Uh, and the honor to introduce His Excellency Sami Al Gamzi, the Director General of the Department of Economic Development of the Government of Dubai. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful, Your Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, UAE Vice President and Prime Minister. Uh, and ruler of Dubai, uh, His Highness Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, Crown Prince of Dubai, Sumo Sheikh Maktoum bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, uh, Vice Ruler of Dubai, Your Highnesses, Your Excellencies, distinguished delegates and guests. I have the pleasure to welcome you once more at this uh, summit on the global agenda, and Dubai is proud uh, to host it again this year. Thus reiterating our commitment to foster dialogue on a prosperous future for the world. Hosting the summit reiterates, reiterates the growing recognition of Dubai as the best gateway that can seamlessly connect people and trade today. Ladies and gentlemen, 
despite uh, global uh, economic uh, circumstances, Dubai has retained its vitality as one of the best places to live and do business. The UAE improved its ranking in the Doing Business Report 2013 of the World Bank to 26 among 183 countries against 33rd in t last year. The UAE has jumped 24 rankings, reaching 20 for the rank of 24 globally compared to 46 last year. Therefore, it has become the first in the Arab world in this indicator. The World Bank has also adopted the business registration and licensing procedures in Dubai as the standard for the ease of starting a business in the UAE. The chief engines of the exceptional growth are trade, tourism, and logistics, attracting investments, exports, and re-exports sectors have been the bedrock of Dubai's evolution into a global hub. Estimates show that Dubai's economy will grow at more than 4% in 2013. Dubai has shown its capacity to attract companies uh, and investors from throughout the world, and they were able to attract a total of 113 companies worldwide for 115 projects and st getting strategic partnerships of a total value of 16 billion dirhams for the first half of this year. Tourism remains a pillar of Dubai's preeminence in services. Tourist arrivals in Dubai grew 10% and hotel revenues by 19% during the first half of 2012. Over the first six months of the year, more than 5 million tourists visited Dubai, and it's expected that Dubai will uh, welcome the same number for the second half. Passenger traffic through Dubai International Airport increased uh, by about 14% for the first six months of 2012, uh, and the airport is projected to handle 75 million passengers by 2015. Dubai is focusing on building facilities, communication, fostering infrastructure by up to the best world-class uh, criteria, improving services and uh, expenditure. The successful restructuring of business uh, of uh, government-owned businesses uh, allowed the reimbursements of debts while maintaining uh, the sustainability of development. Ladies and gentlemen, Dubai has a model of excellence development based on the visionary leadership of uh, creating a an internationally competitive uh, international hub where we can uh, welcome projects and allow enterprises of all sizes uh, to do business while providing the best to those individuals who choose Dubai as their place of residence. I would like to draw the, draw the attention here to the Green Economy for Sustainable Development, which is an initiative launched by His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum and has positioned Dubai firmly among global cities leading to transition to a green economy, preserving the environment and as a hub for exporting and re-exporting green technology. Dubai also, alongside its growth, uh, has maintained its philanthropic activity through some initiatives that had attracted the attention of the world. Uh, the uh, initiative of Dubai Care uh, has uh, improved the situation of more than seven children, seven million children, and improved the basic education. Dubai Care was chosen uh, to uh, join the initiative launched by the Secretary General of the UN, Ban Ki-moon, uh, entitled Education First, giving all children the opportunity to get a good um, level of education. Ladies and gentlemen, we look forward to benefiting from this intellectual dialogue between decision makers, policy makers, and planners in development from all over the world, emphasizing our role and capacity in building a better future for our region and the world. Wishing you all your best, all the best in your endeavors. I thank you again for being here with us, and I wish you a good stay in Dubai. Thank you. 
شكرا اصحاب concludes our opening session and we will reassemble at 2 o'clock for the first plenary session on global governance